Hey guys, Jonah Fox here, and welcome to part one of the Harmonica Blues Basics series, where I am going to walk you through playing the blues on harmonica. So let's start today with learning the 12 bar blues progression, and we're going to also uh, kind of connect the dots and understand how we follow it using the matching notes and chords on our harps. This is going to be very easy if you could play like three notes you could do today's lesson, okay? So in this example, we are going to be using a C harmonica. I'm playing a Honer crossover uh, in the key of C. Uh, for this video, if you're interested, I have a review uh, from way back. You can find it on my channel. So I'm using this Honer crossover in C. Now, when we're playing the blues, we're really gonna be playing in second position or cross harp. <laughs> So if you don't know what I'm talking about here, if you don't know what positions are, or maybe the scales that you have available to you in second position, that's totally fine. We're gonna cover those details later in the series, or you can watch a previous video I have on the topic. That link is going to be up here or down in the description. All right, so let's go and get started. Blues is a unique genre of music. I want you to get this because most genres are obsessed with being innovative and subverting your expectations, but blues stays the same. It's all about being predictable, and it's usually played in this 12-bar chord progression. Yes, there are more modern blues songs that use the same tonality but don't have the same chord progression, but when we think of the blues, generally we're thinking of these 12-bar chord progressions that everybody knows, and it's the predictability of it it, that makes it so much fun and the fact that it's like the same all the time really opens you up to be expressive and that is really what defines a good blues player harmonica or otherwise is really connecting with that level of expression and it is so easy to be expressive while playing the blues number one because the kind of where it sits tonally uh has all these cool bends and stuff and, and they're they're kind of expressive techniques but because everything is so predictable it kind of frees you up that's what i'm trying to say so as a harmonica player here our role is to be able to follow this pattern and to be able to solo over it too in a way that sounds well bluesy so that's what i'm going to teach you in in this series and again we're starting with the 12 bar blues and then we're going to add in riffs and licks and blues turnarounds and study from some other players so by the end of this you'll really understand what the 12 bar blues is and know what to do when you're playing with one either something that you're improvising on your own or if you're playing like with a backing track so when we're talking about a 12 bar blues we're going to be using roman numerals to communicate our chords now we do this because let's say you're using uh the uh, the chord like G, right? Now in the key of C, that is going to be your five chord using Roman numerals. I haven't explained it, so I, I know if you're lost, don't worry about it. Uh, but it's going to be the one chord in the key of G major. So here's a little theory. Are you ready? Okay. So again, I'm a guitar player. Uh, and also I'm curious, how many guitar players are out there uh, getting into harmonica? Let me know if you're a guitar player. I, I'm actually just, just want to know. Anyway, so we have... G major, that's going to be our first chord in the collection of chords that we can use in the key of G. We call these collections of chords diatonic chords, and learning all of this is diatonic chord theory. So we have a bunch of available chords. In blues, we only use three different chords. We use the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. Okay, that's it. That's all we're going to do with the blues. But let me just explain a little bit more. So in our scale, like a major scale, uh, we're going to pick G because we're playing on a C harmonica. And in the blues position, that's a G. So we have the notes here, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. That's the G major scale. All right, and we can build chords off of the root notes here. So we have G major, G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor, F sharp diminished, G. All right, and that's what we call diatonic chords. Now, as I said, in the blues, we only need 
the one, four, and five. So here's the one, G, the four, four, right? C major, and then five. Okay, so those are the only chords that we're using here. Now those chords can be major, like that, right? If we're playing in a like a traditional blues or a major blues, they can be minor. If we're playing a minor blues, all right. So we can uh, change the modality of it based on how we want our blues pattern to sound. And another thing people do is they add a seventh to the chord. So we have like G seven, C seven, and D7, or using Roman numerals, 1, 7, 4, 7, and 5, 7. Now we use the Roman numerals so we can change to another key. So as an example, if we were putting this in the key of C major, we would apply the same concept. We need a 1, 4, and a 5 chord. And in the key of C, that corresponds to C major, and then F major, that's your 4 chord, and then G major, which is your 5 chord. So it really just depends. Whatever key that you're playing in, you use these Roman numerals and you just do a little bit of music theory and you figure it out. Generally, you're not going to have to think about this way too much from a theory perspective. I just want you to get like where people are coming from when they're showing you Roman numerals for chords. And uh, you can think of it like this. Your one chord, that G before, is your home bass. And then you're kind of moving to that D chord. That's kind of like your destination, right? And we uh, can find these notes on our harmonica. So I'm back here with my C harmonica. All right, so in second position, we have two draw. That's a G. Now G, remember, is our one chord. So that note is going to fit when we are on a G chord in the blues progression. And so next we have the four. In this case, that is a C. If we're on a C harmonica, you think you got this? Where is a C? Well, it's that root note of the first position major scale, right? It's the note that is the labeled key of your harmonica. So that's the C. And then D is just the next note in the scale. So that is four draw. And you can kind of hear it. If we put these notes together, it has a bit of a bluesy sound, like one, two, three, four. Now, granted, I'm using some riffs in here that uh, kind of make it sound a little bit more bluesy, but all of those notes here, the D, the C, and the G, are all easy notes, just three notes that you can play that will start matching up with the blues progression. So all you need to know here, maybe if we make it even more simple, just on the harmonica, the one chord is that two draw. All right. The four chord that we get to is the four blow. And the five chord is the four draw. Now, granted, these are chords. You can play more than just this one single note, or when you're actually playing and soloing, you can avoid them all together. But being able to kind of snap to the right note while you're playing and soloing will really show people that you're understanding what's going on. You're following the progression. And that is really important to making your blues playing stay and sound consistent. All right, so let's go and continue this just a little bit more, and I want to talk about chords. Now, right, we can do those single notes, but we can also do the chords too. So we have our G chord, which is a draw note on holes one through four. We can play all of those holes, or we could just play one through three, or two through four, whatever you want. You can do draw across the harmonica, but in some places there are different chords. So just to keep it easy on the low end, that's your G, okay? So when you're on the G in a blues progression, you can play that uh, one through four uh, draw, and that's a G chord. When it goes to the C chord, that is the blow chord all across the harmonica. So you can play one of those C chords. And when we get to the D, it's a little weird because it is not playable in the same uh, quality. So 
quality in music is major or minor, alt, um, uh, augmented or diminished. So we don't have access to a D major, but we do have access to a D minor chord, however, and that is four and five being played together on a draw. So four and five draw. Now, that in a lot of music theory context uh, shouldn't be minor when you're playing to the blues, but it does work most of the time. It's just not going to work if you're playing in a really major, happy sounding blues. It's going to sound pretty ugly. So let's keep going. Blues is about being soulful, but to get there, you need to really get this underlying pattern. So I'm going to put something up on the screen here that you can follow along with a couple backing tracks. And here's what you do if you want to practice this on your own and what I think you should do after this video. So you go to YouTube search and you type in blues backing track in G if you're playing a C harmonica. And you can also add an adjective like slow blues backing track in G if you want to try a different style. And I'll cover some of those styles in another video in this series. So from here you just pick any track and you try to follow the changing chords just by playing the either the matching chords that I just showed you the G, C, and D. And uh, you can try following along like that or you can just play the root note. And if you're playing the root note or you're playing the chords, just as an exercise, if you know if you could solo and stuff, that's cool. But just as an exercise to understand this chord progression, you might just want to stay on whole notes like. Something like that. So let me go show you a quick demo, re-explain all of these things, and I will uh, go over what you should be doing at home after this video. All right, guys, here we go. This is a 12 bar blues. And in this slide, it is written using Roman numerals. Now I've color coded these. The one chords are all going to be blue. The four chords are going to be red and the five chords are going to be white. So as we're looking at this, we can, uh, first of all, take this pattern and apply it to any key. And we just would replace the one with the one in that key. So if we were playing, let's say a D major blues, that one would be a D chord, but we know we are in the key of G so we can make these conversions and we can turn them into the chords we have accessible in the key of G and that is your G your C and then the D one four five okay so I'm gonna play this for you and I'm going to announce the chord changes so you can get it in your head and then we're gonna open up some backing tracks and try to track this on harmonica together here we go so let's start with the G ready one two three four G G G G C C back to G G, D, here we go. D, C, G. And it ends on that D. That is the 12 bar blues. And we can change these chords up to kind of change the tonality, as I said before. So instead of a G, we can play a G7. And then we can go to the C7. One, two, three, four. Back to the G7. D7. C7. G7. D7. There we go. And that is a 12 bar blues. Okay. So here's the pattern. We have a one chord for four bars. In this case it's a G or a G seven. We have a four chord for two bars, C seven. We have the one chord again for another two bars. And then the last four bars goes the five chord, the four chord, the one chord, and then the five chord. Okay. There's a lot of information there. Let me have both of them up on the side. Now, remember we can play the root notes of these chords along with the whole chords themselves on our harmonica and our notes are going to be two draw for the G. All right. And then we have four blow for the four chord and it would go back to the two, right? And then we have the five, the four chord, four blow, the two draw, and then four draw. 
So you can kind of hear this here and you can see the chord progression is down listed below the numbers up there. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is open up a backing track and try to follow along on the backing track with these notes that are listed up here. The two draw, the four blow, and the four draw, the one, four, and five chords respectively, or G, C, and D. All right, so I'm going to open up a backing track. Let's go give this a shot. All right, so we have the track here. Let's just listen to it the first time through. So we have a G, G. Now we can play this as two draw or the G chord, right? And then we would go to the C. Here we go. C, this is four blow or a C chord. Back to the G. Here we go. Two draw or a G chord. And then we would move up to the four draw, D chord, C, four blow, and then G chord, two draw, and then D chord, four draw. All right, let's try it together. Next time around, we're going to just play these chords as root notes, okay? We're gonna hold them for four beats, hold them for the whole measure, okay? And I'm going to be announcing these chords as the changes happen, and I want you to play along with me. Let's go wait till it comes around on the guitar. Here we go. Okay, we're starting with two draw on the G. Here we go. One, two, three, two draw. Four blow. Two draw. Four draw, four blow, two draw, four draw. All right, so that is the 12 bar blues. And you can do this process with any sort of backing track. Some have different feels. Some might even have the chords in a slightly different order. Um, so don't be surprised if that happens, but this is the standard order that I've been teaching you today All right, we're gonna try it one more time, but this time around I want you to try just playing the chords instead of the single notes, okay? So when it comes around, let's give it a shot. Here we go One two three G chord chord G chord D chord C chord G chord D chord All right, and that is how you play along with a blues backing track. Now, there's a lot more to do here. There's riffs, there's playing scale runs in between this, but being able to lock on to these chord changes will make you actually sound like a blues musician. So give this a shot with a bunch of different backing tracks, get comfortable, and then starting next week, we're going to be adding more and more detail to make your blues jams a lot more fun and interesting. All right, so that is it for today. Hopefully this video helps you get going with playing the blues. And this is just the basic kind of framework, the basic skeleton that we're adding to. And in the next few weeks, we are going to look into adding some riffs, which are like slightly longer musical phrases, uh, some licks, some very like classic blues licks that you can add. Those are like short little musical phrases. And some blues turnarounds, which are something that you do to end the 12 bar pattern. We're going to learn these things and really make this basic formula come to life. So stay tuned for all of that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Also, I have a free course called the Harmonic Accelerator. It's just going to help you really build up a solid practice routine on your own at home. It's really detailed. It'll help you out a lot. You can check that out. The link is down below in the description. 
And if you're just getting into playing the blues or you've been trying for a while, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you're having trouble with the blues, what are you stuck on? What are you having trouble kind of connecting in your mind? Let's talk about it. I'll be around to comment and help you guys out for a little while. Thanks for watching and uh, thank you guys for subscribing. I'm kind of coming up on about 700 subscribers right now. So that's uh, super exciting for me. And I hope that you uh, stay tuned to the future videos in this series. We have a new one coming out next week. All right. I will catch you next time. See ya.